Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to share my best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget and also to inspire you to do the same. Today I'm back in the next for my tiered tray series. We are doing eight different Easter tiered tray decor DIYs today. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. I am so excited to be bringing you these Easter tiered tray decor DIYs today. These are most of the items I will be using to create these. First of all, we're going to make this sitting chick. I'm going to use three Dollar Tree wooden egg ornaments, a couple wood hearts, some scrapbook paper, and four tumbling tower blocks. So I've noticed that even though you get more of these shapes in the package, they seem to be a little bit thinner. So I'm actually going to take some wood glue and I'm going to glue three of these egg shapes together. That's going to give me the thickness that I would prefer with these. So just line them up, use some wood glue, and then I'm using some of the little mini craft clamps that you can get at Dollar Tree to hold these together until the wood glue is dry. I'm also going to take four tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue those together in pairs. These are going to be the legs of our chick. So just line those up with the wood glue and again set those aside until they are dry. Then I'm going to take these two wooden hearts. These are just um, heart shapes that I had in my stash um, you can use from anywhere and I'm going to paint these orange with my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. I'm also going to paint those legs orange once they're dry and I'm going to take a piece of this large craft stick and I'm going to cut a triangle that I will use for our chick's beak. We will also paint this orange. Once our eggs are dry, I'm going to take some yellow scrapbook paper. It's actually yellow with little white polka dots from Hobby Lobby. I am tracing our eggs and then I'm going to cut out this shape and Mod Podge it to the front of our eggs. Once the paper is dry, I'm going to take our little sander and in a downward motion, I'm going to go around the edges of the egg just to get any excess scrapbook paper off and get those edges nice and straight, nice and clean. Next, using some hot glue, I'm going to glue the hearts onto one end of the tumbling tower blocks. The hearts are going to be the little feet for the chick. And I do want to make sure that that point is flush with the tumbling tower blocks so that they sit flat. Once my feet are attached to my legs, we'll go ahead and glue the legs onto the egg shape to be the body. Next, we'll glue the upside down triangle on for the beak and then using a black paint marker, I'm going to draw just two little eyes onto our chick. First, I'm going to take three little lengths of yellow ribbon. I'm going to fold them over and glue them in little loops and then we're going to glue these three loops to the back of the chick's head 
You can do this in place of feathers. I didn't have any feathers and I thought this ribbon looked really cute. If you wanna use little yellow feathers, you could do that as well. And here's our cute little sitting chick, our first DIY for this video. For DIY number two, we are gonna make some clothespin carrots. I have done these in the past. They're super easy and cute. I'm just taking regular wooden clothespins from Dollar Tree. You will need three clothespins for each carrot. So first you're going to take them all apart, removing the metal springs. Once you have all the metal springs removed, you're going to use wood glue and you're gonna glue the two halves of the clothespin together, but back to back. So you can see it's gonna make like a little, looks like a little person kind of. Um, I didn't do this on purpose, but it seemed like three of my clothespins were a little bit longer than the others. So I actually, in a minute, you're gonna see, I'm gonna use those longer clothespins for the top of my carrot. Once I had them all glued together, I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of these clothespins with pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. Once that paint was dry, you can see I'm gonna glue two clothespins together like this. They're gonna make like a V. I'm just putting glue on that bottom section that angles together. And so we're gonna make three pairs, like I said before, of our smaller clothespins. And then once those are dry, we're gonna glue a third clothespin right to the center. You can see it kinda of does look better, I think, when that middle one is taller that's also going to give us a spot to glue the bow at the very end. Next, taking three little pieces of a boxwood greenery, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna glue that behind that middle clothespin, and you can see I'm just gonna kind of press it in there. And we'll do this for all three, and then I'm gonna make a small black and white gingham bow to finish off each of our carrots. Then we're just gonna glue that little bow right to the center of that front or top carrot to finish these off. I think these are so cute and adorable and you could make so many of these with a package of wooden clothespins from Dollar Tree. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I really hope you enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by tapping that subscribe button. Also tap the bell and choose all notifications so YouTube should let you know each time I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. I just passed five years here on YouTube so there are plenty of videos for you to watch. For DIY number three, we're gonna make what I'm calling peep bunnies. I found these wooden peep-shaped bunnies at Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to paint them with a couple different colors of my Waverly chalk paint. And then we're just going to stencil a word on the front 
from my Magnolia Spring Words stencils. Once that paint is dry, I am going to sand it lightly with 400 grit sandpaper just to make our bunnies nice and smooth so that our stenciled image will be as crisp as possible. So to sand those lightly, get rid of the dust. I'm gonna wipe them with a dry paper towel as well to get the dust off. And then we'll stencil our words onto our bunnies. On the blue bunny, I'm just gonna stencil the word bunny and we're gonna use a pink uh, chalk paste for this and then on the pink bunny we're just going to do the word Easter. And here's our cute, simple little bunnies. I just love how cute and simple those are. DIY number four, we're gonna make a mini Easter book stack. You guys have seen me make book stacks before. This time I am gonna use a wooden crate from Dollar Tree again. And I'm going to use my painter's tape to tape off each section as I paint it to look like three separate colored books that are stacked together. I am using Agave Waverly chalk paint for the top book. So I will do this top section all the way around and I'll also paint the bottom of the crate which will be the top of our book stack with this color as well. Once that top section is dry, we'll put painter's tape around again, this time to paint the bottom section of our book stack with ballet slipper. And now before we paint this middle section with maize or yellow, I'm going to tape off the two sections that we already painted with the agave and the ballet slipper. I decided I wanted to add a rectangle of decorative paper to the top, so I'm measuring the dimensions of the top of the book stack here, and then I'm going to take off about a quarter inch in each direction. So that's gonna give me how big of a rectangle I'm gonna cut with my scrapbook paper here. And I believe I'm doing two, I can't read it, <laughs> two and seven eighths by four, five and a quarter, there we go. That's just for this wooden crate. And then I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on the top there, spritz some water on the back of this scrap of paper, and we will attach it down here to the top of our book stack, leaving a small border of the agave paint showing around the scrap of paper. Then once that was all pressed down and there were no air bubbles, I'm doing another light layer of the Mod Podge right over the top to make sure that paper doesn't go anywhere. Now I'm choosing to use another one of my Magnolia stencils. This is from our Spring Minis to put words on my book stack. You could use any number of things that you've seen me do before. You could do um, sticker letters to spell different things, but I'm gonna use this stencil that says bunny trail and then a little arrow that says hop this way. I did bunny in black. I'm going to do the arrow in, I believe it's Tiffany teal, and then I'm gonna come back and do trail in the black as well.
To finish off our book stack, I'm gonna take another piece of that black and white gingham ribbon. I'm going to attach it inside the back of the crate. And then while that's drying, I'm gonna take another piece and make a slightly larger than small, so maybe medium, uh, simple bow here that we're gonna glue on top. I'm gonna leave the tails a little bit longer. And then once this bow is ready, we're gonna wrap that ribbon around the book stack and then attach it again on the inside of the crate. And lastly, we'll just glue that little ribbon on, that bow on, on top. Love this, I love making book stacks. For a complete list of all the tools and supplies I've used in today's projects, please open up the description box below the title of this video. There you will find my link tree that has all of my links, as well as a list for each project of the tools and supplies that I used. DIY number five is going to be a carrot truck using one of these standing trucks from Dollar Tree, some of these tiny carrots that they have in their Easter crafts, and some tumbling tower blocks. Now I wanted to fill in this gap here so that I could put the carrots in the truck. So what I came up with was six tumbling tower blocks and I'm gonna glue them end to end. Once those are dry, I'm gonna glue those three pairs together, but you can see I'm gluing them on the larger face of them. So I'm making these six a nice, um, I don't know what you would call it, just the this is gonna be the bottom of the truck. Now I'm just figuring out how to glue it in. The best way I think is from the bottom, I'm gonna glue it to that back cross piece and then glue it up against that front cross piece. I think that makes sense. So that uh, back cross piece is actually a little higher if you're holding the truck the right way. Um, so you can see how that's gonna line up there. I just want to fill in the bed of the truck so that I can put the carrots inside. So while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint my truck, mostly using agave chalk paint. You'll see here I am painting both the outside and the inside, so all four truck sides of this standing truck. I just want it to all be colored in and not see any unpainted wood. Then I'm gonna take my dark brown chalk paint called Truffle and paint both sides of the rails here for the bed of the truck. I'll do the outsides and the insides. I also cut these two pieces of that giant craft stick to use as the front and back of the bed of the truck to hold the carrots inside. Once I get them painted truffle brown, you'll see where I'm going to glue those. Next, taking that same black paint marker that I used on the chick, I'm just gonna add some details now to my truck, painting the tires black, and also a little bit of the front and back bumpers and kind of the, um, the rail that you would step on to get into the truck. So apparently I didn't film when I actually glued those two pieces in, but from the top here, you can see where I have them glued in all the way to the left there at the back of the bed of the truck, and then there on the right, kind of in the middle of the truck where those rails started on the side. So it's holding them all in, and I'm just gonna put in as many of these tiny carrots as I can fit to finish off this super cute carrot truck. You could add more details to the truck if you'd like, but I just think it's cute and simple like this. DIY number six, we're gonna make some blocks that spell hop. This time for blocks, I'm gonna actually use the insides of three of those wood drawers. Now I realize some of you haven't been able to find these, but you can use this idea with any type of 
block. You can even do this like I've done before with the foam dice. So what I'm gonna do with these three drawers is I'm gonna paint the entire outside with white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm going to measure the sides of our little boxes here, and I'm going to cut three, they're not even perfect squares, they're more like rectangles, three rectangles from four different scrapbook papers. So each of my boxes is going to have a piece of each pattern scrapbook paper. So I love that these are all from Hobby Lobby. I love this one with the bunnies. We'll do the pink with white dots, the plaid, and the yellow with white dots. Next, I'm gonna Mod Podge each of those papers onto the four sides of our box. I'm gonna leave the open space at the bottom and the tops will just stay white. So I am also gonna do paper over the cutout holes in our little drawers here. I'm gonna do the bunny one, spritz some water, and we're gonna cover that over the hole with the shape in it. And then we'll just keep going, flipping our blocks and putting the four different patterns of scrapbook paper on the four sides of each block. Once all that Mod Podge paper is dry, I'm gonna take some poster sticker letters from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use one pattern paper for each of my letters to spell the word hop. And here's our finished hop blocks. If you love watching budget home decor DIY videos like this, I encourage you to consider giving this video a thumbs up and also leaving a comment or two after the video. That just lets YouTube know that people are watching and enjoying my content and they will show it to more viewers. For DIY number seven, we are gonna make an Easter yarn tree using one of these styrofoam cones from Dollar Tree as well as some yarn from Dollar Tree and some pastel mini pom-poms from Hobby Lobby. So I'm choosing to use yellow as the main color for my tree here. I'm just going to wrap it going up and down a couple of times trying to fill in the white spaces then I'm gonna come back with just a little bit of the teal, kind of crisscrossing over the yellow. Once I had the tree covered with as much yellow as I wanted, I'm just gonna snip the end and glue that down. Then taking the blue, I'm gonna glue one end of it to the top of the tree here. And then just like I said, wrap it a little bit around our yellow tree. Then taking this felt flower from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna glue that up to the top. You could also glue an Easter egg up there, it would be really cute as well. Then taking a few of these mini pastel pom-poms from Hobby Lobby, I'm just gonna randomly glue some of them to the outside of my tree. Of course, this is an optional step. 
I have these on hand because I'm using them in the final DIY of this video. And here's our finished Easter yarn tree. For DIY number eight, we're gonna make a pom-pom tag garland this time. Instead of using beads, I decided to use these cute pastel mini pom-poms from Hobby Lobby. They're really inexpensive. So I'm using a needle and some embroidery floss here. And be very careful not to poke yourself. I'm just going to thread these onto my string here using all six colors until I run out of a color. I decided to use two of these little wooden tags. I believe these are from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint these with kind of a bright green acrylic paint from Walmart. I'm gonna paint them on the front, back, and the sides of each of our tags. Once that paint was dry, I did sand it lightly like I did on the bunnies. And on these, I'm just going to do a couple of our mini stencils that have an image. No words this time. I'm going to do this swirly egg in pansy and this cute little backside of this bunny in, I believe, French rose. And lastly, once our stenciled images are dry, I am going to add that to either end of my little pom-pom garland here. I'm just gonna tie a knot and then trim off the excess to finish our garland with a tag on either end. So cute and fun, and I love the idea, the alternative of using the pom-poms instead of wooden beads. And here's a look at our tiered tray we made a couple weeks ago with all of these Easter tiered tray decor items on them that we made today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can't wait to hear what you think of it. Thanks again so much for joining me today. As always, please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.